little badly bono here with a midweek Game of Thrones video for you to discuss a theory that I have about where the show is going from here that hinges on a key piece of information from the last episode, The Long Night, that I don't think anybody is talking about enough, or at least I've only seen one or two other references to this online. And I think it's a very plausible theory, and I think it explains a lot about why, spoilers for The Long Night, obviously, but why the Night King was dispatched so quickly, you know, why we have um, still three episodes to go, and it feels like, wow, the big threat of the series is already over with, on and on it goes. If I'm right, the big threat of the series is not only not over with, but we don't even know who it is yet, and I'm going to explain in just a second. But since this is a Game of Thrones video here on the Sci-Fi Christian, I am, as tradition dictates, going to crack open a beer. This is Backwoods Bastard from Founders that has been aging in my fridge for a year. I have some older ones, but this one's about a year old. And I'm expecting it to be delicious. And it is. If you've never had Backwoods Bastard, that is their barrel-aged uh, Scottish uh, Scotch Ale, and it is phenomenal. Just a great beer. And Game of Thrones is a great show. And I know people are disappointed that not enough people died. And I agree with you on that, as I talked about in the video. Um, that I think that it is a little bit... The plot armor was a little too thick this time around. We either should have had some of those characters in different situations or had a few more deaths, at least of secondary characters. And I think that's a legitimate criticism of The Long Night. But what's not a legitimate criticism, at least based on what I think is going to happen, is the idea that it's anticlimactic. Okay, so let's get into this. Um, there's the line from Melisandre that starts in Season 3 and came back in a big way on Sunday night, where she says to Arya in Season 3 when she meets her when she's with the Brotherhood Without Banners, and she says, I see a darkness in you, and inside that darkness there are many eyes staring back at me, I shall shut forever. Brown eyes, blue eyes, green eyes. And this has been one of those lines that over the years different people have theorized about, not successfully, either that it's a throwaway line, no big deal, or that it's just referring to a lot of the different people that Arya has killed because, you know, over time you're going to, you know, check off all the different possible eye colors. Okay, not the case, as we learned. What we learned is that at least blue eyes is referring to the White Walkers. The Night King specifically, but I'm going to say the White Walkers in general because with the Night King, she shuts all the blue eyes, okay? So that changes the game significantly. And the question then becomes, what does brown eyes refer to and what does green eyes refer to? I don't want to attach too much significance to the order that Melisandre originally says those and she reversed a little bit in this episode to end dramatically on blue eyes, but... The original order was brown, blue, green, which could have some significance, so we'll get into it in a moment. Before I give you the details of who I think the brown and green eyes are, uh, I want to cover a couple things. So first, I don't buy the fact that the series is just kind of going into epilogue mode with three episodes to go. I know I've heard people say that. I don't buy it. I don't think that that's how this show is going to end. Not to say it's going to have a great ending, could be a terrible ending, but it's not just going to whimper towards the finish line. That's not the type of show you're watching. Another thing to consider is that George R. R. Martin uh, knows what the ending is, and that's one of the things he told uh, Dave and Dan, the showrunners, way back when they had their outline powwow when they first started to get past the books around season four-ish. Okay, so he's known where it's going. He hasn't known every way that we're going to get there, right? Because he doesn't, he doesn't, he's not an author who works from an outline. He describes himself as a gardener, not an architect, meaning that he doesn't have everything planned out, but that he knows where he wants to get to. And I think that's reflective in some of the weaknesses that have appeared in the show post uh, passing the books. Well, we've still had cool moments, we've still had awesome revelations. We've had stuff that we know originated with Martin, like Hodor, um, but we 
you know, there obviously have been weaker moments along the way too. And so the way I look at this show is that we are getting to the same point, roughly at least, that the books are going to get to, but from a different point of view. That's significant because we are heading back into Martin territory here as we move towards the show's endgame. So whatever weaknesses have been there over the last few seasons as we move beyond the books, and to be honest, outside of season seven, I think they did end Dorn. That whole storyline was just a cluster. Uh, they did a pretty admirable job, in my opinion, as they moved into the post-book territory. But we're moving back into Martin territory. Not stuff he's written, but stuff where he was able to tell them this is where we're going to wind up. Another significant thing to remember is that when they had their powwow with Martin, their response was that he told them three things that really caught them off guard. One was the revelation about Hodor, two was the execution of Shireen, and the third, they said, is going to come at the very end, last episode or right before the last episode or during the last episode or something like that. It's going to be at the end meaning there's still a significant twist out there that we're not seeing, that's shocked them, that caught them off guard, that we haven't seen coming. Okay, that leads us back to Green Eyes. Now, the Green Eyes line has gotten a lot of attention on the internet, but people seem to think that Brown Eyes refers to Walter Frey, which I'm fine with. A little slight variation on that in a second. And that Green Eyes refers to Circe. Circe has Green Eyes in both the show and the book. No big deal. Problem with that is that the prophecy made over Circe, uh, uh, where I forget all the details of it, but that she's going to outlive her children, and then her younger brother will kill her, or her brother will kill her. There's some variation on her brother going to kill her. So a lot of people have, have taken that, along with the Arya thing, and said, well, Arya's going to put on Tyrion or Jaime's face and kill Circe. Definitely possible. Would I be shocked if the series goes there? No, but I don't think it is because I don't think that's what that prophecy means. I'm taking it more literally than that. And I also uh, think that thematically, the show has been setting up Jamie killing Circe for a very, very, very long time. Not Jamie's face with Arya underneath, but Jamie himself is going to kill Circe. The show has been setting this up. The books have been setting this up. Uh, for years and years and years. So I don't think Green Eyes is Circe. So who's Green Eyes? Let's go back to Brown Eyes for a second. If we posit that Blue Eyes are the White Walkers, that means that they refer not to an individual, but to a race. Brown Eyes then becomes humans, all the people that Arya has been killing. Green Eyes? The children of the forest. Okay? The children of the forest, who we know created the Night King. And I'm going to put up a picture of them here at the end of the video, but you'll see their eyes are green in the same way that the Night King and the White Walker's eyes were blue. Okay, very, very distinctive. So the children of the forest, if we recall, actually created the Night King. And why did they create the Night King? They created the Night King as a weapon in their war against the humans. So the children of the forest are not these benign little Legend of Zelda elf creatures that have been out there this whole time. They are uh, a force that has been at war with humanity, and they're represented in the Weirwoods, okay? Now, in the books, Melisandre, when she's trying to recruit Jon to the Lord of Light, she, and you know, get him to be Lord of Winterfell and all this, I think this is at, either at the end of Storm of Swords or it's in Dance with Dragons, and she tells him that she wants him to cut down the werewolves. Okay, so Melisandre, her war is not only against the, um, against the Night King, but also seems to be against the children of the forest. Now, to be fair, she's fairly iconoclastic with all the other religions, so that could just be that. But she does make a point of telling him to cut down the werewolf. Now... The one problem with this theory is that if we're going to have an all-out invasion of Children of the Forest, um, there just isn't time for that. So I don't know how this is all going to work. Uh, clearly, we're not going to have uh, White Walkers Part 2, but this time it's little, little brown-green guys coming out of the woodwork. Uh, what I think is possible is that you have some type of 
disruption, some type of we're safe, we're on the Iron Throne, we're all going to be happy, and then here's the children, and all hell breaks loose, and whatever happens, happens. I still, you know, want to stick to the idea of there possibly being a time jump in the final episode. I think that's still a distinct possibility. And so you have that, um, but you also have the other possibility here is that Bran's vision is referred to, at least in the novels, and I'm pretty sure it's been referred this way in the series too, as the green sight. So Bran also has green eyes. Who's Bran aligned with? Is he really human? No. Uh, you know, what does he even say in the first episode of this season? Uh, you're a man now, is what John says to him. Almost. Well, he's not referring to his maturity level, he's referring to his state of being. Bran is no longer human. He's now the three-eyed raven. He's part of the children of the forest. So where are his allegiances? So it's very possible, because I am 100% convinced there's more with Bran that we haven't seen. Dead set. Even if I'm wrong about everything else, I'm convinced I'm right of that. So given that, is it possible that the green eyes Arya shuts are Bran's? Yes. I think highly possible. Does that Could that even have a similar effect to... The Night King, Children of the Forest. I don't know. I think that might be a little bit of a stretch. The point here isn't to say this is point by point what's going to happen. Because I know theories like that, when you get too specific, you're almost always going to be wrong. The point here is to be able to say, there is more than you have seen. Something else is happening here. You, It just doesn't make sense from what we know about George R. R. Martin and how he's planned to end this story and everything that he sets up. It doesn't make sense dramatically. Nothing about this makes sense to kind of go into this extended epilogue mode for three episodes. There's too much that's been set up. There's too much going on out there. Call it wishful thinking if you want. Maybe that's all it is, but I think the clues are there, and we're going to come to a finale that has something to do with the children of the forest or Bran, or combination of both, being the green eyes that Arya will wind up killing. They're the real threat. They're the ones who created the Night King in the first place. And all this is going to be going down in the final episode of the year. And we'll find out if I'm right starting next Sunday. Actually, probably in three weeks, because the next two Sundays, I think, are mostly going to deal with Cersei. And then shit's going to get real. All right. Goodbye, everyone. I see a darkness in you. And in that darkness, eyes staring back at me. Brown eyes, blue eyes, green eyes. Eyes you'll shut forever. We will meet again.